Let's get started on today's notes over transformations of functions. This is day one of your transformations topic, and today is more of an investigation as we go through these transformations. The first transformation we're going to talk about is a vertical translation. What's a translation? It is a shift in the graph. We are taking the whole graph and we're just moving it up, down, left, or right. So to vertically shift the graph, the absolute value of k units, absolute value is always positive. So this is just the way that we are telling you that it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. That's actually a different transformation that we'll talk about later. So to shift the graph k units, it will look like this. We're going to take our function, any function, and we're going to add a constant to it. If that constant is greater than zero, it will move the graph up. If that constant is less than zero, it will move the graph down. So let's see what we're talking about. Three functions are graphed on this coordinate plane. The graphs of g of x, which is right here, and h of x are transformed functions of the graph of f of x. So maybe you can make some observations. But g of x right here, here's our function rule. f of x, g of x equals f of x plus 3. So when I write this function rule with f of x, I want you to keep in mind some of the things that I've told you in previous videos or anytime you see f of x, you just it's just fancy schmancy for y, right? So y plus 3. So what does that mean? So when I write this function rule like this, really f of x could be any function. It's just in this graph, it represents this function right here. So f of x plus 3. Describe the transformation that occurred to the graph of f of x. So we're looking at f of x, and we're going to see what happened when we transformed it to g of x. So make an observation. What do you see? The entire graph shifted up three units. So let's write that down. The entire graph, not just one point, the entire graph shifted up three units. which means each y value increased by 3. Each y value. So this y value went up, this y value went up 3 units, this y value, and everything in between also. But I'm just looking at kind of these big exaggerated points here. They all went up 3. Let's look at h of x. h of x equals f of x minus 5. Describe the transformation that occurred to the graph of f of x. So what happened from f of x to get to h of x? Well, the entire graph shifted down 5 units. So let's write that down. The entire graph shifted down 5 units. Each y value decreased by 5. So here we can see that when we added 3 to f of x, each y value increased by 5. When we subtracted 5, I'm sorry, each y value increased by 3. When we subtracted 5, each y value decreased by 5. So let's move on to this last example. Looking at number 3, the function b of x is graphed on the coordinate plane. The function is translated up 4 units to create r of x graph r of x on the coordinate plane, and then determine b of negative 4, r of negative 4, and then we'll write a function rule. So if I'm going to translate this entire graph up 4 units, I know, based on what we just saw, that every point on this graph moves up 4 units. So let's start right here with our reference point at 0, 0. That's a pretty nice point to start with. If I move that up 4 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my new reference point. And then if I graph everything else, you can pick a couple points if you want. One, two, like right here. I can pick that point, move it up. One, two, three, four. And then I can connect those points. I can also um, just see that this right here has a, neg a slope of negative one. And I can do the same thing over here. But if you're more comfortable, like taking a point and moving it up. One, two, three, four. And then connecting those. 
that works really well, okay? So, and it's not perfect right here, but you can always get a straight edge and make it perfect if you want. So now let's determine B of negative four and R of negative four. That's how I read that right there, B of negative four. So what does that even mean? That means, what is Y when X is negative four? It's just fancy schmancy for B of negative four, I'm evaluating the function when X is negative four. So what is Y when X is negative four on this function right here? When X is negative four, Y is positive four because that point is negative four, four. Y is positive four. What about R of negative four? Well, that's this function over here that we graphed. That's our transformed function. Well, when R is negative four, our function is one, two, three, it's way up here. It's at eight, negative four, eight. So R of negative four is actually eight. So what do you notice? The Y value increased by four. The Y value is what's affected when we vertically translate a function. So what's our rule in terms of B of X? R of X equals, well, we took B of X, and we added four to it. Now let's move on to our next transformation, which is horizontal translations. Okay, horizontal translations. Let's change colors here just because I want to. All right, horizontal translations. To horizontally shift the graph, H units or absolute value of H units. Again, it does not matter if there's a negative in there. We're only looking at the number. So to horizontally shift the graph H units, we are looking at this right here, F of X minus H. That is how our graph is affected. But please notice right here that in our little formula, if you will, please be very careful because it's affected by X minus h. If this number right here is greater than zero, it actually moves the graph right. And if it's less than zero, just that number, it will move the graph left. So that's kind of what we associate, right? If it's moving something to the right, it's positive. If it's moving something to the left, it's negative. But you have to be really, really careful with any horizontal transformations in this case, horizontal translations. So given this first example, three functions are graphed on the coordinate plane. The graphs of J of X and M of X are transformed functions of the graph of F of X. So take a moment to look at these graphs. In number four, it says J of X equals F of X minus seven. Describe the transformation that occurred to the graph of F of X. So we're looking at F of X right here and J of X, which is the one in purple. So what happened? Did the function move to the right or to the left? It actually moved to the right. So let's just pick a point. I'm gonna pick this one right here. It moved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces to the right or seven units to the right. But when I see this, I automatically think it's moving to the left. It's not that way with horizontal transformations. Okay, you have to be really careful because your, your graph is affected by this up here, X minus H. So a good way to think about it is what do you need to do to get back to from J of X to your original function? You would have to move left seven units or minus seven units. I mean, that's just a way to think about it. So J of X equals F of X minus seven. The entire graph shifted right seven units. So you have to be very careful. Each X value increased by seven. Increased by seven. Each X value increased by seven. So here we have a transformation that's affecting our X values, not our Y values. Let's move on. M of X equals F of X plus five. Now again, what's different about these function rules than, than the ones we just looked at? Well, here our plus five is inside our parentheses. That's gonna affect our X values, which is 
going to affect the horizontal part of it. We're moving our function left and right. So describe the transformation that occurred to the graph of f of x. Well, let's pick another point. Let's pick this point right here on the graph of f of x. How did we get from f of x to m of x? One, two, three, four. We move five to the left. So what happened? The entire graph shifted left five units. Each x value decreased by five. So each x value decreased by five. So let's move on to number six. The function b of x, this is the same function we looked at previously, is graphed on the coordinate plane. The function is translated three units right to create h of x. Graph h of x on the coordinate plane and then determine b of negative four and h of negative one. So it's translated three units to the right, which means let's take our nice little reference point right here at the origin, zero, zero, and I'm gonna move it three units to the right. Now I know with translations, the entire graph is gonna shift. So if you want, you could draw a line that's perfectly parallel to this other one, or you can just pick a point like this one right here and move it to the right three units and then connect those two points because it's gonna affect every point on that graph the same. And you can do the same for this part of the graph over here on the left side of the y-axis. I can take a point like this one and I can move it to the right three units and then I can connect those and draw it as perfectly straight as I can on my computer. And now let's determine b of negative four and h of negative one. So we drew h of x right here in red, and I'm gonna switch my pen color. b of negative four, so b of negative four, that's this function right here, b of negative four, one, two, three, four, there's where my graph is, negative four, positive four. So when x is negative four, y is positive 4. What about h of negative 1? h of negative 1, well, here's where negative 1 is. h of x is up here, which should be right there. h of negative 1 is also 4. So what do we notice? The y values are the same for these two points, but the x values, what happened? To get from negative 4 to negative 1, we added 3. But again, that function rule is f of x minus h. So how are we going to write this? h of x equals b of x plus 3 or x minus 3. We move to the right 3, but it's x minus, and then you put that positive 3 there. So just be very careful. Let's move on to our next transformation reflections across the axes. So let's first talk about reflecting a function across the x-axis. To reflect a function across the x-axis, this is our function rule right here. We have a negative value in front of f of x. Remember, f of x is just fancy for y. So when we reflect something or flip something across our x-axis, which is right here, all the y values are going to become opposite, so opposite y. Let's move on. The function f of x is graphed on the coordinate plane. The function k of x, that's right here, represents a transformation of the graph of f of x. So number seven says k of x equals negative f of x, or opposite f of x, whatever you want to say. Evaluate the graphs for each of the following. So we're going to evaluate f of 7 and then k of 7. So f of 7 is right here. Here's where 7 is. Here's the graph where x is 7. So when x is 7, y is 2. So f of 7 is 2. What is y when x is 7? Now let's look at k of 7. Well, that's the function that's graphed in red. So k of 7, there's where 7 is on my graph or on my coordinate plane, down here, 
is where k of x is. So when x is 7, y is negative 2. Let's look at f of 2. f of 2, well, that's right here on our x-axis. What is y on our x-axis? Any point, it's 0. k of 2 also lies on our x-axis. It's also 0. Let's look at f of 0. What is y when x is 0? Well, let's see. x is 0. That's going to be on my y-axis. And here's where our point is. So f of 0 is 9. What about k of 0? Now we're looking at the function graphed in red. k of 0, we're on our y-axis. It's way down here at negative 9. So let's see if we can make some observations. Let me change colors here. So what do we notice? If k of x equals negative f of x, and we evaluated the function at these different points, the x values we didn't affect, but what happened to the y values, or we didn't change? The y values became opposite. This y value became opposite, right? Well, what happened on our x-axis? It did not affect the points on our x-axis y, because that's where y is zero. On this x-axis, that is where y is zero. Can I take the opposite of zero? No, it has no value. It's neither positive nor negative. It's just zero. So that leads me to the question, were the x-intercepts affected? The x-intercepts were not affected. Let's write this down. The x-intercepts were not affected because y equals zero on the x-axis. On the x-axis. However, the y-intercept was affected because the opposite of 9 is negative 9. You can also um, prove this by if you have a negative in front of f of x, it's like multiplying that y value by negative 1. So if I take y and I multiply it by negative 1, I would get negative 9. Let's move on to reflections across the y-axis. Let's change colors here. To reflect a function across the y-axis, what do you notice in our function rule? The negative is not outside the f of x part of or my function. I'm not just taking the whole function and multiplying it by negative 1. I'm actually multiplying just the x value by negative 1. So that negative is inside my parentheses, which means I'm taking the opposite of all the x values. Likewise, if here's your y-axis. If you reflect something across that y-axis, you flip it. What are you affecting? Are you affecting your x values or are you affecting your y values? You're affecting your x values. You can clearly see in this graph that my domain is what's affected. My range stays the same. So the function f of x is graphed on the coordinate plane. That's right here. The function p of x represents a transformation of the graph of f of x. So p of x equals f of negative x. Evaluate the graphs for each of the following. So I have them here. And let's first look at f of 7. So f of 7, we're looking at the graph that is in black f of 7, here's where x is 7, there's where my graph is, 7, 2. So f of 7 is positive 2. Well, now I'm going to look at p of negative 7. So p of negative 7, that's the function that's graphed in navy blue, here's where x is negative 7, and there's where my graph is. So negative 7, positive 2. So in p of x, p of negative 7 is positive 2. So now let's look at f of 2 and p of negative 2. So f of 2 is right here, and that's on my x-axis, which means y is 0. p of negative 2 is right here. It's also on my x-axis, which means y is 0. And now let's look at f of 0 and p of 0. So f of 0, 
that's going to be when x is 0, which is on my y-axis. So as you can see, that's a point that both of these functions share, f of x and then p of x. And that point is 0, 5 on my y-axis. So f of 0 is 5 and p of 0 is also 5. So let's see, let's see if we can make some observations with this. So what do you notice when we evaluated the graphs at these different points? My y values are all the same, but what do you notice about the x values? The x values were multiplied by negative 1, or we took the opposite of these x values. But what about f of 0 and p of 0? Again, I can't take the opposite of 0. It has no value, so it's just f of 0. So that is the function that they, or that is the point that both of these graphs share. So was the x-intercept affected? Yes, it was. The x-intercept was affected. Because the opposite of 2, of 2 is negative 2. Again, what's another way you could prove that? Because 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. The y-intercept was not affected. Because this is a reflection across our y-axis and we're taking the opposite of all x values, if a point is on the y-axis, that's where x is 0. So it's not going to be affected if your point is on your y-axis if you reflect it across. So the y-intercept was not affected because x equals 0 on the y-axis. Let's move on to our next transformation, which is vertical stretches and compressions.